village hall on a quiet summer evening. But there seems to be something doing. A film audience. Cyprus is an island. There's a good film, but it's more pleasant outside. No thick carpets, no concealed lighting or padded chairs for this audience. Why here? How did the film get here? It all started in 1940, when films were first taken on the road by the Ministry of Information. People had to be kept informed. Many of them had to be trained and trained quickly to do new jobs. When the scheme began, there were 50 of these vans. Each of them could carry films, a screen, a projector, and sometimes a portable generator. For the films had to be taken to their audiences to wherever people happened to be gathered together in the upheaval of war. Factory workers would have film shows in their canteens during the lunch hour, and later in the afternoon there'd often be a specialized film on methods of production for management and foreign should find its way into the metal being heated. 40% goes up the chimney in the waste gases. Some heat passes into the furnace walls and hearth, as indicated by the arrows. Another portion is lost to the surroundings by radiation and convection. In peacetime, the need for information and training remains, and films are still taken to people wherever they are gathered together. The service has grown from 50 to a fleet of 144 vans working from 12 regional bases. The audience may be 70 or more miles from the base in the cities, towns or villages. The cinema may be a barn, village hall or even an island school. van with its projector is not the only way for film shows to reach their audiences. Many institutions and groups have their own 16 millimeter projectors and on their request films are sent to them by post free of charge from the Central Film Library. As more projectors become available an increasing number of films are lent out in this way by the library. And here is the model layout with first an intake and labeling room for films arriving in the library for the first time. Next, a small theater for viewing. A store for prints kept in reserve. Stacks for films in circulation. Offices, including a program booking room. A dispatch room. Another intake room for films returned by borrowers. An examination room where films can be cleaned and checked after being used. Fireproof vaults must be provided if inflammable film is kept. Now let's take the case of a new film. It will arrive here from the laboratories in the intake and labeling room where prints are numbered and sorted. And here in fact are 20 prints of a new film arriving for the first time. The number of copies ordered depends upon the estimated demand from borrowers. This film, New Builders, is about apprenticeship in the building industry and is first shown in the theatre to the library staff so that later they may advise borrowers on their programme requirements. In the meantime, in the intake and labelling room, the prints have come over to this table to be numbered and put into fiber boxes before going into the circulation stacks. Films of more than two reels go into deeper boxes. Every film in the library has its own code number and every print its own box and print number. 
U.S. is the code for subject. 229, the catalogue number of new builders. S.D. Sound. There are also a number of silent films in the library. L1, L for library, 1 for print number. These boxes will be the permanent home of the prints from now until the day they are junk. New builders will be referred to in future as US 229, secondary numbers 1 to 20 for each print. Numbers 1 to 18 only are available for borrowing. Prints 19 and 20 are kept in reserve and on leaving the intake room go to the store. The 18 prints available for lending go to the circulation stacks. Here, in code number order, all films in circulation are kept under constant temperature conditions to prevent them shrinking. These films serve some 2,000 borrowers. The library holds on its shelves 1,000 different titles with a total of 12,000 prints. Among them are copies of films from other countries, from America, Australia, Canada, France, New Zealand, Poland, Russia, South Africa and many others. The 18 prints of US 229 go on these shelves to await customers and are arranged in print number order, print one on top. All 20 of the new prints are recorded in these offices. The history of every print in the library is kept here from the time it's received through all its bookings until it's junked. Each print has its own history chart. So there are 20 cards for US 229 to go into the index trays. The cards for the two prints in reserve are identified by vertical lines and no booking will normally be made for them. All that now remains is for someone to ask for US 229. Requests for films are dealt with in the program room. Borrowers don't always specify the title, sometimes asking the library to suggest a film. This is the case even with a regular borrower like Mrs. Laws, who wants children's charter on the 21st of October, but is also inquiring for any new films dealing with educational problems for an earlier show on the 27th of August. Any new film dealing with educational problems. New Builders is chosen. But Mrs. Laws also wanted children's charter. First, see if there's a print of both films free at the times requested. This is the first request for New Builders, US 229, so the booking is made on print one card. Mrs. Laws has a file, only the file number is entered. Now for the other request, children's charter. Print one is already booked for the 21st of October. So is print two, three, four, five. Print six is free. Notice that 10 days are allowed for each booking. Five days for the print to reach borrowers in any part of England. Five days to return to the library. Details of Mrs. Law's request are then entered on the booking form. Three copies are taken with file number, date of request, date of showing and code number only of the film required. The second booking is entered on the same form. Each one of the three copies has a part in the library process. The first one goes on the file, The second, back to the borrower as an acknowledgement. The last and most important one goes next door to the typist room. The forms for all future bookings are kept here. 
But notice that Mrs. Law's form is tabulated as the 22nd, although she wants the film for the 27th. For it's not until the 22nd of August that any further action will be taken on her behalf. Today, on the 22nd of August, all the booking forms for films required on the 27th have been taken from the Cabinet. Five days from now, Mrs. Laws will be having her first showing. These franked labels are typed with one copy. More than the address goes on, file number, code number, date of showing. The labels and their copies then go to dispatch, but before following them, note what happens to the booking form. Mrs. Laws wanted children's charter for the 21st of October, so until the 16th of October, five days beforehand, when this process will be repeated, the form goes back to the cabinet. The copies of the frank labels, which are for all bookings on the 27th of August, have gone to the circulation stacks where they're used as dispatch notes. Prints are taken in order and arranged on the trolley ready for dispatch. There's only one film to go to Mrs. Laws for her first booking, and it is print one of US 229, which is taken. The print number is entered on the dispatch note, and it goes together with the films to the dispatch room. And so, off goes US 229 in company with many others. All the films dispatched on this day, the 23rd of August, are for showing on the 27th. Turn to the library, it comes to the second intake room where films are checked in and again sorted according to code number. But this is only the first check. Every film as it's returned is passed on here and is cleaned, examined for scratching, torn sprocket holes or other damage. The most common causes of damage are oil and dirt in the projector or careless threading. And this is the result. Scratching, when shown on the screen, means this. Torn film and sprocket holes spread. This is caused by a tight loop on the projector with this effect on the screen. Sometimes repairs can be made, but this film will have to be junked. Some prints last for 80 to 90 showings, while others, in the hands of careless borrowers, are ruined in the first projection. However, with US 229, all is well. The print goes back to the circulation stacks, where it joins all the other films in circulation. 10,000 copies a month. These are the kind of 16 millimeter films sent out by the library or taken by mobile vans. They are available to all parts of the British Isles and to all groups of people, nurses, farmers' clubs, or schools. An egg can often be extracted. There's something on the needle, a mite and an egg. The eggs are very large compared with the size of the female. They're oval in shape and pearl-like in appearance. Often it'll be found that only the shell has been extracted well, they're very delicate. It strips off all but a few of the main flowers of the ear of the seed parent and removes the pollen sacs or anthers. Next, he finds an anther of the pollen parent with ripe pollen. He taps it on his nail to make sure it's ripe. Then he pushes it into a prepared flower of the seed parent and the cross is made. In Scotland, Iron Age peoples built a special kind of fort, or rather castle, 
known as a brock. Some of the best stand on the rocky shores of the Orkney and Shetland Islands. The Brock Tower was probably the castle of... There are shows for housewives who want information on domestic science or health. The symptoms are red and inflamed eyelids with crusting on the eyelashes. Consult a doctor and he will tell you to remove the crusts by bathing the eyelids with weak boracic lotion or some other solution. Youth clubs may have films about the sciences or planning. First, let's look at one of the neighborhoods and see how that's arranged. Here, near the center, is the junior school. The people would live in streets or squares of terraced houses, each with its own private garden, or in blocks of flats, also standing in their own grounds. give them facts, material for discussion, just as the feature documentary film gives information and entertainment to wider audiences. Easy enough to destroy, but to rebuild, to plant again, and bring life back to the earth. That takes thought and hard work and time. But what they are doing is what men and women all over the world want to do and must do to make this poor earth rich again. As the years pass, we shall see this new world grow and remember our sweat and toil with joy. And we'll say, we planted these trees. This is our world growing. In these ways, 15 million people every year in Britain can see a film shown by their request. Thank you.